Maintaining a consistent and effective productivity system to learn how to code can be a little bit challenging, especially if you have other life commitments on the side. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably have more commitments other than just university related tasks. So in this video, I'd like to show you guys a minimalistic productivity system that I've used for the past nine months to learn from development. And I'd also like to share some of the adjustments that I made to the system, whether they worked or not. And by no means, this is the perfect productivity system for everyone. Everyone is different and different things make people productive. And hey, if you're new here, my name is Hui and on this channel, I talk about self-taught front development, technology, and how we could modify our productivity system to transcend our creativity. Anyhow, let's get right into it. So let's talk about the digital tools that I use for my productivity system. So the first digital tool that I use is Notion. Yes, the productivity software that everyone uses. So to manage and organize my learning, I use a very minimalistic to-do system or setup on Notion that does not require a lot of effort to maintain. Let's run through the overall structure of my setup. So the first block is at a glance block. This block helps me grasp what's the overall deadlines of projects or upcoming events that I have to be aware of. Also include other relevant categories for each item, such as date, details of the item, priority, and status. This at a glance block helps me visualize and plan my week accordingly. Second section is the weekly blocks. So in this section, I have to-do blocks that span throughout each day of the week. For each item that I add has the priority, urgency, and status categories. This is pretty standard and I think it helps me a lot on organizing my task. In addition, I also have task archives that filter items that are either complete or incomplete, which really helps with the organization. Lastly, I then have a section for goals. This is where I put down the goals for my week and each goals have a category which really helps with organizing stuff. I also like to have a lot of personalization into my Notion setup. And as you can see, there's a lot of GIFs on the side and custom icons. It just makes my to-do list more entertaining and enjoyable to maintain. If you guys wanna try out this Notion setup that I have, I'll be linking a template down below in the description. So to effectively manage my time on the tasks that I set up for myself, the second digital tool that I use is the Promoter Timer. So I rely on the Promoter Timer to prevent burnout. However, I found that the traditional 25-5 technique doesn't really work for me as it takes me around 10 minutes or more to actually like focus and enter the flow state. So I dedicate a few weeks on trial and erroring my workflow to find the optimal time or optimal balance. So my goal was to reach the flow state efficiently without spending excessive time on a single task, which could lead to burnout. So after the process of trial and erroring, I found that my optimal time system was one hour to one hour, 30 minutes of working time and 15 to 20 minutes break. And that's my optimal time system. Although it might work for me, it's probably not going to work for you. So that's why I would suggest spending time trial and erroring to find out your optimal time system. And overall, I feel like using a timer really helped me ensure that I'm putting enough time into a certain task and also really helped me to stay more productive. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. It will be really helpful. Anyways, let's continue. So the first productivity system that I tried implementing is Ali Abdel's productivity system. So his overarching method is to use Google Calendar and plan out your day accordingly, and as well as setting time blocks for every and each of your tasks on the calendar. So I found that setting time blocks was a little bit too constraining for me, especially if it forms a sense of rigidity and kind of limit flexibility. It kind of puts a mental pressure on me whenever I'm not following the plan exactly. And whenever unpredictable events occur, it makes it a little bit frustrating for me to adapt accordingly to the plan that I have laid out for myself. And I found it quite overwhelming and stressful. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you should avoid his productivity system. I think you should definitely try out his system to see what works for you. And I know that his productivity system has worked really well for some other people, but it's just not for me. Yeah, I think I would just use Google and Calendar to set up meetings and events. So by the end of the day, rather than setting time blocks for my tasks on Google Calendar, I like to go on about my day, just completing those tasks that I set up for myself just before going to bed. Now let's shift our focus away from digital tools. And recently I bought a medium sized whiteboard for around 10 Australian dollars and has stimulated my productivity and creativity. On the whiteboard, I divided it into three sections. The first section is dedicated to my daily task, which I set referencing my notion to do list. 
The second section is a backlog of tasks that I can address later on. And lastly, I have an upcoming column where I can note down deadlines and submissions. Having a whiteboard adds this extra interactivity and hands-on approach to planning. It also helps me instantly visualize my task and timeline as I sit down, rather than spending the extra effort of opening Notion. And also, if you guys happen to use a whiteboard as a part of your productivity system, please let me know down in the comments how you use your whiteboard. I'd like to try it out as well. So to stay consistent with coding, I aim to code every day for at least an hour or more whenever I have the free time. So a valuable concept I've come across in Austin Kleon's book, Stealing an Artist, is the idea of practicing productive procrastination. So essentially by having two or three more projects, so in my case, coding projects, I can switch between them when I feel tired or uninspired with one particular project. And I basically balance between these projects. So I have incorporated this approach of productive procrastination into my workflow and it has been quite effective to stay consistent with coding. I'd recommend you guys to try it out as well. Another method that I also implement to stay consistent with coding is to have a list of technologies that I want to learn. So by having a list of these technologies, it motivates me and excites me to continue coding. And I don't know about you, but having a visual list of these technologies is super cool and inspiring. It's not only planning and spending time to code, but I also recognize that maintaining and balancing my personal health and mental health has been crucial to stay productive and be consistent in coding. So other than coding, I like to spend time on like exercising, reading, or just getting enough sleep and have a consistent sleeping schedule. And I think nothing beats sleep. If you feel like your brain is boiling and aching a bit, it's probably your body telling you to take a break. So just step back from the screen and go touch some grass. Or just go to sleep if it's already late. Ultimately, I think we should avoid burnout at all costs. And as a beginner in front development, I truly believe that we should stay consistent and avoid burnout in order to become a better developer or a good front developer. Overall, a productivity system is something you should take for granted. It is more about you committing to the system that you've set out and organized for yourself and proactively trial and erroring to see what does and what doesn't work for you. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.